Welcome back to Mob Pod. It's Mob Pod time. We have a name now, and it's Mob Pod. It has always been that name. <laughs> yeah, that was just always the name. We just never really said it or used it. We didn't think you guys were ready for it yet. Until now. I'm ready for all that genius right there. <laughs> we're a little late on the name, but we have one. For the last three episodes. <laughs> for the last, like, yeah, for the last <laughs> half of the final season. Mm-hmm. We have a name, and we're going to talk about today. Uh, episodes 7 and 8 of season 3, which are the Transmission 1 and 2, the Alien arc. These were fun episodes. A little bit of a downtime in in between Broccoli and the final arc. Yeah, it's a good breather. And fun to see some characters that we haven't seen a lot of. Mm -hmm. Like Tomei, who is a great character. I mean, she's been around from the beginning, but we haven't really had a lot of insight into who she is. Yeah, I think Tomei's, a lot of Tomei's, like, in, like motivation is shown through here a lot when it's, like, she's always been kind of seen more as a gay character. And it's like, oh, no, she actually takes this seriously. And even the club members themselves are like, oh, shit, she takes this seriously and she's yeah. crying. I really like Tomei, especially in the anime. She just comes to life so well. I just feel like they bring her personality through so much in her antics. She's kind of like yeah. Reagan in that aspect. Yeah, a lot of her mannerisms are really similar to Reagan's, which is fun. Mm-hmm. And I hope they do animate the Reagan spinoff manga because it would be really fun to see more of the two of them interacting. Mm-hmm. And I wonder, I just, like, I always want to know, like, the characters' inner lives and... You know, Reagan and Tomei's first interaction was her, like, screaming at him over yeah. the phone and calling him a fraud. And him, like, yelling back, basically, at this child and being like, you're just using Mob, too. He's like, <laughs> kettle like, meat pot. And Mob is just sitting there like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really funny. And I wonder if he even remembers at all, like, when Mob's like, these are my friends, if he has any recollection in his mind. No, but... he just yells at so many people. And people, <laughs> so many people yell at him. Because, like, Tomei must remember. Oh, yeah, Tomei she, remembers. She would remember and that. Reagan's but Reagan like, I don't remember probably that. doesn't, no. He doesn't remember. Reagan's like, get in line, honey. Yeah, he's like, I've yelled at lots of children and I will continue to yell at children. (laughs) Indiscriminately, I don't care. He's like, he started it, so if my memory... (laughs) She did start it. Recollection. Uh, This first episode is pretty much just like the setup for the next one, but it has Mm -hmm. some fun character stuff in the return of the Shiratori brothers, twins. Oh, yeah. I really like the framing they did um, when the Shiratori brothers are talking to them in the park. When it's like, you know, they're on the swing sets and the one, it goes to one and he's like in the corner, like the far left corner and then the other one's in the far right corner and then it shows the three boys and it's like just the top of their heads. I don't know. I really like that framing. I thought it was cute. Yeah, this episode had a lot of good creative framing for an episode that is mostly dialogue. Mostly dialogue, yeah. No action really, but it was able to frame those scenes in an interesting way. I kind of noticed too, it is like a lot more streamlined when I was rereading the manga a little bit earlier. Uh, There's a lot of exposition jumping, especially from Inukawa. Mm. In the sense of, like, he's just kind of over-explaining what we just saw. <laughs> oh, sure. And it's like, it's like he's like, like, um... Specific- like to Mob or to the brothers, or...? Kind of both. Like, yeah. to Mob, he over-explains, like, oh, we didn't know Tomei was so into this, and we came up with the idea, and it's like, like, in the clubhouse, in the club room, and they're like, oh, well, maybe we should read these books, and that's when they... In the manga, they start explaining, like, the UFO sightings there, I think. Oh, okay. And they go more in depth with it again when they talk to Takanaka later oh, on. Yeah. But, like, it's just, it's a lot more streamlined in the anime. So even yeah, then, they good. still cut out, like, a lot of dialogue. And you can kind of skip through those things pretty, yeah. pretty yeah. easily without losing anything. Yeah, exactly. Or it's, like, it's either that or it's, like, explained sufficiently well enough mm-hmm. later on or something. And we have a new character making his, like, real anime debut, Takanaka. Takanaka, yay! <laughs> yeah, we did see him briefly at the end of season two. And mm-hmm. I guess technically, was he actually shown in season one? Or yeah, I, 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 I do remember that. Okay. I, I remember the clip of him running out the door. Yeah, so, yeah. so they did kind of show him way at the beginning just like the concept of telepathy a lot Mm -hmm. um and the way that it's explored here is really interesting just like the way that it would be more of a curse than a blessing really and he Mm -hmm. just tries to ignore his powers almost entirely at this point yeah it's it's really interesting because mob has come into contact with so many other people who have powers similar to him and how they live with those powers and a majority of them are like 
either if they see it as a curse or a blessing, they make it their whole priority and they like showboat it like Teru does or yeah. use it for work like Mogami does or think they're better than everyone like Sho's dad does. But Takanaka is like, I literally hate this. Like, this yeah. is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. So he's much more close to the mob in that sense mm-hmm. in relation to his powers than anyone else he's faced because mob feels very similar probably. Yeah, that's true. Like, they do have a lot in common. When Mob says that, Takanaka is just like, you can't relate to me. Yeah, he's like, let me read your mind. He's like, oh, fuck, this kid's got trauma. (laughs) He's like, I've suffered more than Jesus. And then he reads Mob's mind. He's like, oh, no, Mob has suffered more than Jesus. (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) Suffered more than Jesus. (laughs) <laughs> put it into perspective a little bit he's so he's so emo i, lo- okay. I love him well and then it, it's it's funny because it's almost the exact same as like tarot where it's like i'm the main character no one knows how i feel yes. and it's like oh shit this kid does yeah just like the self-pity and yeah. the spectrum rather yeah than kind of close to the ego. almost yeah yeah that's yeah. true i really like Mob when he's talking to Takanaka before he reads his mind and like the line he kind of has where he's like my powers are a part of me and I have to live with them and it kind of at first comes off as like acceptance and he's like yeah I have to deal yeah. with these but like where we know we know where the series goes and he doesn't really come to that recollection until like chapter 100 or at the end of the series so it's more yeah. like this is a part of me I have to deal with almost like mm-hmm. and I recognize it's a part of me it's a part of me I really don't like and it's a guilty sense that he has like a yeah. burden he has to carry almost yeah because he was getting a little better at using his powers in ways that are just for fun like he used to like yeah. even in this arc when he uses his powers like to um as a gift for the aliens is a really yeah, sweet moment that when is he's cute. like I don't have anything to give them but I can just like show them yeah. like, my powers and it's like a thing that brings joy. So he's getting a little like a little better but I think he hasn't fully internalized it yet yeah. cuz he still has so much fear of it that he hasn't worked through. Even I think helping the Shiratori twins with by using yeah. his own powers I think shows a lot of that too because I like He's, like, using his powers to help amplify theirs, which in itself could, like, turn out bad. Like, yeah, something could blow up. I don't up. think it's something he would have done in season one. Exactly. That's like, sure. Ritsu's yeah. right there. He, someone could get hurt. But he's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll help him. And I think more so for the fact, this is for Tomei. Let's help. Let's do yes. it kind of thing. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. There's this little cutaway, which is really cute in this episode, that shows the, like, Awakening Lab kids and then uh, Serizawa and Reagan when the uh, telepathic uh, signal is going out. And it was just a, a cute way to use, like, the cutaway there yeah. to, see if, to see a few characters around town being like, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> I like the idea of the telepathy kid or um, the spirit awakening Mm -hmm. kid still hanging out with that dude. I think that's yeah, like he's just our friend now. He's our middle aged. This weird man is our friend now. There's a lot of that. Yeah, that's that's happened a lot in this in this city. No one has a (laughs) regular relationship. Yeah, no no one's normal. No one's normal. Um, Everyone loves to hang out with like middle schoolers. Imagine if you're like this in your town, tw- kind of sus. Imagine like being our age in our mid twenties, and then being like, "Oh, I can't hang out tonight. I'm hanging out with my middle school friend group." Yeah, if you told that to me, I'd be like, "All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and block your number." Actually, <laughs> you're doing what now? You're doing what now? You're you're like babysitting them, right? Or uh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm being paid by their parents. What's worse is being like <laughs> I'm not babysitting them. I'm exploiting them for my own business, <laughs> them which for is money. like might be a little bit worse. Yeah, it's, a little, it's a little bit worse. <laughs> like, hmm, that's all right. <laughs> there is one small exchange that was in the manga, but not in this episode. Uh, with Ritsu. Well, first, a great Ritsu moment is just when Takanaka reads him for film. And he's like, <laughs> I can tell your brother complex without even having to read your mind. Yeah, he's like, obvious. I can see it in your eye. Yeah, and Ritsu's just like, oh no, did Nissan hear that? Uh, <laughs> it, that, that was cute. I like that. Bob is like literally two feet away from yeah. them and he's like not even, he's so out. He's thinking about something Bob else. really does not react to his surroundings. This very <laughs> <laughs> he's thinking about the weight he needs to lift yeah, during he's spring so break. Now. Or winter break. Um, um. But the other Ritsu moment that was um, in the manga but not in the anime is when they're about to leave the club room. One of the Shiratori brothers says, like, 
oh, we'll leave now so that the actual members of the telepathy club can make their memories together. And Ritsu like thinks to himself, wow, they're making it sound like I can't take a hint. <laughs> and then he's like, okay, I'll leave too. Uh, yeah. It's just a cute moment when he's like, okay, I guess, all right, all right, I'll leave. <laughs> he wanted to hang out, although there wouldn't have been enough room for him in the car, I think. And imagine if, like, Reagan and Ritsu were doing their thing on an alien oh, spaceship. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would have thrown the whole thing into a... Yeah, that's just yeah. too many characters and too many, yeah. like... Too many dynamics Dynamics going on. going on. Ritsu had to be excused from the situation. Right. He's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm erasing myself from the narrative. Because yeah. he totally wanted to come, but if Mob told him that Reagan was driving, he probably would have dipped. Yeah. Been like, never mind. Reagan was like, I only have so many seats in this rental yeah, car. Yeah, you're not invited. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite uh, scenes from the manga is when Reagan gets the call from Mob and has to pretend like he doesn't really want to go. I love this scene. I think this is so sweet. Yeah. And I think... I like that they add a little bit more with Sarazawa, like, listening in or watching the phone conversation, because yeah. you can tell he feels bad for just uh, rejecting Reagan's <laughs> shot that he... <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, that that obviously, like, another favorite moment is when Reagan's like, hey, do you want to get a drink? I totally so, forgot so that happened. Yeah. And I, I was like, wait, he straight up does ask him for a drink. That's and the first time Reagan's tried to, like, make a friend and four years who's like mom. close to his age group who yeah. can legally drink and Sarah's always said no heart yeah. it's so sad and Sarah's always doesn't even try to like reschedule because he like doesn't know how to interact with people because <laughs> so he doesn't know how to interact he's not I mean, like oh I'm busy tonight but I could no you're right tomorrow he's you're just right. like I can't yeah <laughs> End of end of conversation. And Reagan's like, well, I'm never going to attempt that again. That was right. But it's obviously, it's <laughs> obvious that Sarazawa does care because yeah. he's relieved when Reagan does make plans. Yeah, it's and very sweet. And Reagan acts like it's like this huge, like, like man, I was going to go party. Yeah. Oh, oh man, no, my he... New Year's plans just got yeah. ruined. I have to babysit now. <laughs> You're going to sit in your pajamas and eat cup noodles all night, yep. you stupid bitch. We know what you were going to do. Yeah. Then, which are great plans. I'm yeah. not going to judge him for that. Yeah, those are my New Year's plans. <laughs> and then Reagan uh, sleeping in on uh, the morning he's supposed to pick up the kids is like just such a funny thing how he's like, oh, I always scold Mob about oh, yeah. how, he has, how he has to be punctual. And now I'm the one that's late. The way this was played in the anime was fun with his like freaked out expression yeah. that the anime added where he's like cracking the alarm clock with his <laughs> grip <Yeah. laughs> this is very like opening of like a stereotypical anime like yeah. reagan's come running out with toast in his he mouth he runs out with toast in his mouth i'm gonna be late kids. for telepathy school yeah oh. <laughs> and the little scream that the voice actor did after that was so funny he gets to scream a lot of this yeah. season he he gets to go all out which is like great for him honestly i love that <laughs> I like the whole thing where when they're waiting for Takanaka and Inukawa is like, is it actually okay to make your master wait this long? And mom's like, I'm, I actually don't know. And he, I don't know why, but I just like that yeah. interaction where he's like actually kind of nervous that Reagan's going to yes. lose. <laughs> I really like that too, because he's like texting Reagan and he's like, Reagan's not replying. He must be really mad. Yeah, Reagan's like sprinting across town. <laughs> yeah, he Reagan doesn't respond. have any time to reply. He, probably he like saw that text and he was like, oh, thank God. And just kept running. Yeah. <laughs> It's really cute. It's really cute how he runs up to Reagan and the first thing he does is apologize. Oh, it is cute. I like he's, that. he's, like, gonna make all his friends apologize, too. He's yeah. like, we have to apologize to him. He's like, don't ruin this for me. Yeah, do not ruin this for me. My cool older friend. Right. It's just a little instance. It's like that where it's, like, how highly Mob respects yeah. Reagan. Yeah, he really does. He doesn't want to waste his time. I relate to Mob so strongly in that scene as, like, such an anxious thing where it's, like, you ask somebody to do this favor mm -hmm. for you and then you your group makes you late and you're like oh god this yeah. is the worst thing that has ever happened everyone be, hates me <laughs> it would be really anxiety provoking oh my god they, like, these are like to, nightmare scenarios for trying me. to coordinate this between two different groups of people yeah like, that's, that's very stressful he handled it really well i know he handled it better than i, I would have started crying at that age yeah and reagan's just like it's fine let's not worry Peace, about it as yeah. he's like sweating he yeah. <laughs> and they hit the road at the end of this episode and they did did kind of work in that joke that's from the manga where uh, his face briefly turns into the new driver badge. I kind of forgot that that's specifically what it was. Yeah. I remembered the manga face itself more mm -hmm. so than the joke. So I was like, hey, it's one of those things where they turned it into the face from the manga. Yeah. That's so funny. And then 
yeah, when I was rereading it and you pointed it out, you're like, oh, yeah, it's a new driver badge. And I was like, oh, shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, just a little translator note at the bottom yeah. that explains that. <laughs> also, joke. speaking of translation, we got to talk about please drive safely. Oh, yeah, <laughs> please, please drive safely. How about we stop talking for a little while? Okay, so that was the manga translation. How about we stop talking for a little while? And then the anime subs, I'm sure the Japanese was probably the same, but the Crunchyroll subs were... Don't talk, don't talk to me, to me for, for a little, little while. Or yeah, something. which seems so much harsher to me. It's like so instead funny. of us as a group to stop yeah. talking, it's like don't talk to me specifically for a little while, mom. Like yeah. shut up. Actually. Don't talk to me for a little also, while. Also, the I, for some reason I was thinking that scene happened like while they were like in the woods driving. But no, <laughs> like mom, in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom's like immediately says it as soon as the key enters the ignition. <laughs> he's like, I don't trust this situation. It's the best we have. And he's probably like, she's so. Can you drive? Actually, I've never seen you drive before. Yeah. And he's like, don't worry about it. He's like, actually, how about you? Go I got fuck it. He's gay and he can't drive. He's gay and he can't drive. Listen, he's been driving for ten years <laughs> and he can't drive. What he's is this. He, he got his license ten years ago and hasn't driven since. Oh my god. Same. <laughs> that might. That might be the situation that honestly. could be on his own to car very yeah. relatable I mean, yeah there's public transportation <laughs> available yeah it's clear that he's just like i need to focus on the road but <laughs> it, is, it is funny how he's just like mob shut up <laughs> <laughs> and honestly i'm on team reagan here he should tell mob to shut up more often it's funny it's funny when this older man tells his child to shut up especially a kid who like doesn't talk that much <laughs> It's just funny to be like, he shut up. He says something mom. once and he's like, shut up. He's just Mom's like, okay. Reagan should just be mean to Mob like Rick is to Morty. Like, eh, <laughs> shut up, Mob, you idiot. You're such an like, idiot, Mob. That's what he does in like the first episode. Okay, honestly, you're right. He's really mean in he's the first really few episodes. He's really mean in the first few episodes. And then he's really mean again right before separation yeah. arc. He was and- just having a bad day those days. All right, in episode eight, Transmission 2, Woo. yeah, this is kind of an event episode that had some, like, special animation stuff going on. So, and, was this yeah. the episode with the 220,000 frames? I think so. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think, I, I feel like it is, but I can't be certain. I feel like it is. Yeah. Just, I, for some reason, when I saw that, I thought it was going to be in one specific scene, but I could see that just being throughout the entire episode. Right. I think yeah. it was the whole, the yeah, whole episode. The, the whole episode had yeah. 20,000 hand-drawn frames. And I mean, like, the, yeah, the animation overall is very smooth, so I guess that makes sense. Yeah. And I mean, the part at the end, just the last, like, couple minutes oh, of yeah. that, that had a lot going on. Yeah. So I think... Yeah, I think it was. I never saw anyone saying one way or another, oh, this was the episode with 20,000 frames, or this right. wasn't. So, all I, all I think I, it was. I think it was, because all I know is, like, there's, like, that website that, I can't remember the name of the website, but it's, like, a, it puts up specifically Sakuga yes. clips, and someone's, like, 19 of the 23 yes. minutes of this episode is up there, yeah. which is unprecedented. So, Hakuyu Go did the, he did, like, all three. He directed this entire episode, he storyboarded, and he did the animation direction, which is what mm-hmm. he did for season two, episode five, which was the end of the Mogami arc. Mm-hmm. So, he did that entire animation for the Mogami fight itself, which you can definitely see. He usually does action-oriented scenes. Yeah. So this is kind of the first time he's doing, like, a more low-key episode. But it's clear that it still really works. I really like this style of animation, this looser style. It reminded me a lot of um, Mamoru Husada's work. And he did, like... I know you haven't seen any Mm -hmm. of these movies, but he did The Girl Who Leapt Through Time, uh, Summer Wars, Wolf Children. He did a couple other stuff, but there's always this feel of, like coming of age and like nostalgic growth in his work especially with that loose animation and so that had a lot of feel this episode had a lot of feel with that and I think it worked really really well especially with like the idea of Tomei being worried they won't have memories Mm -hmm. and trying to make these memories in their youth while they still can so yeah I really like this animation style a lot I'm very impressed by people who know a lot about animation uh <laughs> i read the uh sakuga relux twitter thread this week and was yeah. like n- nodding along like yes, yes i, I don't understand any of this but good good point <laughs> <laughs> like oh and this you know this animator did this like two and a half second cut yeah this, uh, i was like okay slay <laughs> <laughs> i like this one a lot too because 
going back with that with like different animators doing different cuts it seems a lot of them like I think the whole series does this as a whole but a lot of this episode's not really on model yes so you can tell when it's like a different animator style yeah, at specific you can definitely scenes tell. yeah but I think that works so well especially with Go's style of like loose animation mm-hmm. I think it just like yeah, incorporates like together sort of- very well hair especially was very round and like yeah. Tomei's like you know spiky hair is a little oh, more yeah. rounded on the edge which I think was like the giveaway for yeah. that, that particular style yeah but I agree overall everyone was very expressive looking though yeah and, like, the backgrounds are beautiful yeah like I said Go usually does action sequences mm-hmm. and so this episode had so much life with it like there's a lot of scenes where when they're just walking and they just have like a lot of weight and personality yeah. to their walks that I really like. Like yeah, little like scenes. when they're going across the bridge yeah. and it's like, like Tomei kind of runs to catch up. It was so cute. Yeah. I like squealed out loud at that because it was adorable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or like when they're walking on the railroad tracks and Tomei's yeah. like walking along on the tracks mm-hmm. or like when Reagan runs his hand through the like the leaves. I think that was Tomei as well. It was Tomei who did the, that? Yeah, from the color of the sleeve. Oh, I thought I it was, was Tomei. For some reason, I thought it was I Reagan. Also it makes more sense it that it was Reagan. It, it, it was makes very, more like, sense for it to be Tomei. <laughs> do feminine hands. <laughs> I also initially thought it was Reagan, but I was like, oh no, it's Tomei just because the, yeah, the color of the sleeve was also yeah. the same as the that same. That makes sense. sense. Uh, that really is nice because it's such like a subtle hint that like, Tomei is actually having fun here. She feels yeah. she has this sense of guilt that she doesn't think they want to be here. Yes. Um. I just love like that's probably my favorite thing about this arc is that it feels like very like it's a very empathetic look at a teenage tantrum. Yeah. Because <laughs> like Tomei totally does have a tantrum here. Yeah. Where she breaks down, is kind of young, and everyone starts crying and is like, "I'm just gonna stay here. I'm just gonna go home." Which right. like obviously you're not gonna do that. Yeah. Like, you're not gonna walk down this mountain by yourself and go home. But like everything that leads up to it it really makes sense like what brings her to that point yeah and, like what's yeah. going on in her head and right yeah. like it's just a very emotionally intelligent writing from one who I think always brings that and especially just with it being yeah. like a teenage girl like yeah, I really appreciate I that too because it's like yeah this is a sort of a humiliating experience where she's like everyone's here because of me and it's not going right right and they all want me to have fun but I don't really like even really want to be here but I kind of do right. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure I think it could have been so easy to just frame Tomei as being like a like, brat yes exactly like, and she doesn't come off that yeah, way yeah and even if she did come off that way it's easy it could have they could have easily frame the narrative as saying like well she's just you know being a brat she just doesn't appreciate all the work we're mm-hmm. putting through and yeah that, and that is how the boys kind of feel at first like, at Ina first Kawa is like what the fuck like we yeah. put all this work for you and you're acting like you're not enjoying it but yeah. then yeah obviously at the end uh like when Takanaka reads her mind out loud yeah. to everyone they're all like able to understand where she's coming from and why right. she's reacting this way and they're able to have a really like sincere moment of understanding each yeah. other. Yeah. And I think that's so nice and I think this is this story is so funny because it's such a down to earth story of a group of kids going on this trip and nothing's going right. Yes. And no one they're all grumpy, they're all tired, they're lost in the woods. And then, you know, at the end of the day, they have a good time. And, like, in a normal scenario where supernatural stuff doesn't happen, that's probably where it would end. It would be like, you know, we didn't find aliens, but we found friendship. The the real aliens were the friends along the way. Yeah. Yeah. I love that about this arc, too, that it does have those kind of two, like, conclusions. Like, the first conclusion is when Tomei is, like... We all had fun today. Yeah, exactly. We, we all, made memories. Yeah, we all understand each other this. better. Like, we climbed up a mountain together. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> um, once they reach that emotional conclusion, we then get this, oh, the aliens are here. Uh, anyway, now, the aliens are here. And now we just kind of tack that on as well. Yeah. It's fun, so. Right, exactly. <laughs> Going back to Tomei's, um... Trauma, trauma. (laughs) Trauma, her tantrum? Her tantrum, (laughs) yeah, thank you. Her tantrum in the woods. Two things I love. I love when Tomei breaks out and then immediately, no hesitation, Regan's like, anyway. (laughs) Yeah, he really did not give that like a second to settle. He was just like, let's keep walking. Yeah, he really is. I like when Mob, um, when he walks up to Tomei and helps her back up and like, there's this like little nice scene of Regan smiling at Mob. It comes off as like he's proud that Mob was able to de-escalate the situation and mm-hmm. help Tomei back up on her own merits kind of thing. Like, he didn't mm-hmm. force Tomei to get back up. He didn't, like, aggressively grab her hand or anything. She, yeah. like, stands up herself and she's like, fine, let's keep going. Yeah, it's very sweet. He's yeah. very proud of Mob and how... Yeah. 
how mature he is in this situation. Yeah. Unlike Tomei, who's having a tantrum in the woods. He's like, God, I'm so glad I don't have a daughter. He's like, girls are the worst, man. <laughs> this splits to like the spinoff. <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, oh no, now I'm a girl dad at the spinoff. <laughs> Girls the spinoff is about ragged learning how to be a girl dad. <laughs> <laughs> this arc is him being like, man, I'm so happy mom is so emotionally <laughs> repressed. Repre- no, I was going to say emotionally composed oh. and totally normal and doesn't have trauma and doesn't have is, outbursts. Just kidding. And just kidding. Mom's tantrum destroys the entire <laughs> city and he's like, I'll take Tomei back actually. That's better. <laughs> he's like, maybe girls are easier <laughs> to handle. a little bit easier to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, and with the uh, Mob and Tomei scene, there was just a small change. So in the manga at that part, Mob says, like, I can't help you with my powers because I'm Karsek, but Me. I do body improvement so I can help you with, like, my own strength and kind of help you climb up the mountain. He's kind of throwing shade at everyone else. He's like, unlike everyone else here, I'm actually in shape so I can climb this mountain. Uh, <laughs> don't let the car sickness fool you. Yeah, don't let the car sickness fool you. I'm a Chad. Um, and then Tomei is immediately like, oh, yeah, but you joined Body Improvement Club and that's why the telepathy club got disbanded in the first place. So this is all your fault, Mob. <laughs> and then she kind of just gets up and is like, fine, I'll keep walking, which which I just love um, that reaction kind of happens a few times with her where she kind of recognizes that, oh, I'm being a brat right now, but yeah. she can't. But she's a teenage um, She's not going to like admit it because yeah. she's a teenage girl. Exactly. And <laughs> so she just has to kind of get defensive and be like, well, whatever, I'll just keep walking. Right, exactly. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, that's a little embarrassing for me, but I'm just going to keep blazing forward. That was kind of cringe. Let's keep going. <laughs> yeah, let's move on from that. Which is very teenage girl. <laughs> Another change from the manga was just the scene when Reagan kind of picks up on the fact that Takanok is hiding something. Uh, it's just staged like a little bit differently. The actual yeah. content of the scene is pretty similar, but in the manga, he gets like right up and talking to his <laughs> face, which is so funny. And I guess I kind of get maybe why they didn't do it like that. Yeah. But it is it is just funny in the manga how he like gets right up in his face and Takanaka like is avoiding eye contact. Right. That's what I like <laughs> in the manga is like Takanaka like there's a part where like he notices Reagan's like looking at him, yeah. and Reagan notices Takanaka avoiding eye contact. Yeah. And that's when he gets up in his face. And he's like, what are you hiding? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Which I, I like a lot more just because the Reagan comes off as m- so much more intimidating. Yes. Um, <laughs> and Mob is like, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> These are my friends. You said you were going to be normal. <laughs> <laughs> you promised, Shisha. You promised you were going to embarrass me in front of my friends. <laughs> Reagan's like, this guy is sus. <laughs> yeah, because it kind of builds up a little more on like what he's noticing I guess because the way that it's yeah. shot in, in the anime is pretty much like you don't even really see Takanaka's face yeah at all really no you so don't. it's a little bit less clear like what Reagan is picking up on yeah and, and so, he does just seem like a telepath <laughs> yeah exactly so like I don't know I, I do like how the manga had it a little bit more and just like Takanaka getting nervous kind of thing Takanaka noticing Reagan staring at him and getting nervous and knowing yeah. Reagan knows something I don't know I feel like that just adds yeah more. like him kind of being out of his depth and yes uh throwing him off kilter a little bit right exactly and obviously if he if he's reading Reagan's mind which I think he is at this point because he's like oh this guy's a liar who is good yeah. at, is good at reading people he like already knows that Reagan is like suspicious of him right Right, exactly. He already knows what Reagan's thinking, which just makes him more nervous. There, uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I just, I wish there was a little bit more interaction with them because Takanaka has like spent his life being like this deadpan kid where he, no one really knows how he's thinking or what yeah. he's feeling, but he knows how everyone else feels. But then he meets this guy who's just yes. really good at reading people. Yeah, Like he, do- he doesn't have superpowers. He doesn't need them. Mm-hmm. He can just genuinely read people. Yeah, and he's cool. like, shit, I, this grown man reads over <laughs> my masks. What am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> when we were talking about this earlier, I just had another thought about the Takanaka part when he reads like Tomei's mind out loud to everyone is yeah. that there's kind of two, two instances in here where he's able to use his powers to help other people, which is something that it's pretty clear he's never really done before. He's never really used his powers like in a way that feels like fulfilling or or rewarding, I guess. Like, yeah. he only really sees it as, like, 
a bad thing or yeah. he used to use it to kind of like harass people a little bit yeah and like you know maybe harass them into doing something good like returning something that they shoplifted or whatever. <laughs> but he hasn't really used it to help other people like in this direct of a way I guess no yeah I agree um so I like the fact that he uses his powers both like to help communicate with the aliens but also to help kind of mend this broken yeah. friend group yeah <laughs> and like show everyone what like how Tommy feels which allows them to all kind of relate to each other I think it also shows Takanaka how like he He's always, when he first talks to the group about his powers, he goes on a lot about how, like, the things people are thinking don't match how they show. And that yes. he almost has a sense of, like, people are fake. So there's no yeah. point in trusting them. And they're meaner inside than they are outside. Mm -hmm. And so, but then he kind of uses his powers here. And it's like, he kind of sees more of an understanding both of Tomei and how she yeah. she's coming off as rude. She's coming off as bratty. But... She's just scared and she's insecure, yeah. like everyone feels, and it just mm -hmm. comes off in this sense. And I think that kind of shows Takanaka, like... Yeah, that's a really yeah. good point. It's not always, like, what someone is thinking isn't always, like, dark or exactly. <laughs> worse than what they're saying. Sometimes right, it yeah. is the opposite. Yes, and sometimes it can just help you give insight. Sometimes the things we say don't match what we're really feeling and that doesn't have to be a bad thing sometimes mm -hmm. yeah like it's just kind of a like protective layer yeah. with Tomei how she's so like passionate about this thing that she, yeah. it's hard to show that to other people because she knows they're just gonna like mock her most exactly of the time. especially at the beginning of this arc when she does like show how passionate she is of this thing and none of the boys yep. really react and they don't care yeah they're like cool. oh you actually care about yeah that? exactly and they don't like put her <laughs> down for it but it's clear and evident to her that they don't share the same passion yep. she does so it's both she doesn't want to share it she doesn't want them to do this only for her and then yeah. end it end up badly so, yeah. yeah, so everybody really, like, putting in the sincere effort and, like, doing this, like, silly little ritual is so cute. Yeah, Because they're like, really we're is. just really going to go all out and we're going to really try to do And this. that's probably some, the first time anyone's ever, like, put in effort to show Tomei her interest. Yeah. Okay. And she really is, like, the real winner here because, like, both telepaths and aliens are real. So yeah, you go, so girl. you go, girl. You are right. <laughs> I'm thinking back to it. I think it's so funny that, like, the show can pull something like this because if you are like, oh, yeah, you know, the show about telepathy and espers and stuff, it's really good. Also, there's aliens at one point. Right. It, it would come yeah. out of left field and everyone's like, oh, okay, <laughs> so that's when it, like, jumps the shark, right? <laughs> yeah, it is a cute thing because it feels like you know, somehow just perfectly in line with the, with the universe. And right. Is used in a way that's kind of restrained and just works to build on. The character stuff is really the heart of it still. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point to it. It's just like everything crazy that happens is always just like pillared up by the characters themselves yes, and their exactly. interactions. And then the aliens arrive. It was kind of cute how they did that where she points up at the sky and then it's like, Oh, I boom. love that. <laughs> that was a great That effect. was great. That's why you make an anime because you can't do stuff like that <laughs> in manga. Tony's little like facial freak out too. Yeah, it's so, so great. She's I like, oh, what that. do I do? <laughs> and yeah, just Reagan's like reaction to everything too. How he's like, don't, like they might have germs. <laughs> it was kind of surprising to me just how early in the episode the aliens appeared because in the manga, it's really like the last couple pages of the chapter. Like it's yeah. really late and it's not a lot of the chapter. So they really kind of fleshed this part out a lot because it was like the halfway point of this episode. Yeah. The aliens showed up their design here i actually liked their starry eyes i love times. their starry I thought that eyes was, that was an improvement on <laughs> how they looked in the manga as opposed <laughs> to just like looking like stereotypical anime shoujo yes, eyes in the, the manga shoujo eyes. Oh, okay yeah i see what you mean they yeah. had like cool i mean they still had that but then they had like but it's like built on a little times, bit more cool. yeah they were cute and their little like chirpy like high pitch <laughs> language was cute yeah and the way it's just like very clear they're just like kids basically <laughs> yeah kid aliens hanging out in their spaceship it was cute <laughs> i like snacks. yeah i like their designs a lot i like I, I always thought it was really funny too just like when anime or animations have something that's like stereotypically looks anime come yes. into contact with them i think is always funny reagan was very cute in the ufo they like this was kind of fleshed out a bit too how he's just like 
hanging out by himself and like flops out on a beanbag chair <laughs> and he's like so chill about this whole thing but he's mostly just anxious about the rental car fees it's kind of <laughs> gives the picture of like an adult like hanging back on the park bench while children play in the playground <laughs> yeah he's just like and hey. he's staring off into the distance thinking about something else I'm just overseeing the kids yeah he does seem a lot like an adult in, in, in these instances where he's not yeah. really interested in like doing what the kids are, are doing. He's just like, you go have your fun. I'm right. just gonna like zone out. I'm gonna disassociate on this <laughs> for a few hours and worry about Serizawa rejecting me. <laughs> <laughs> and try to plot how I can have a normal workplace relationship with this man I'm again. Like, oh no, I ruined everything. I have ruined everything. I'm gonna have a little panic in this corner real quick. Reagan takes his shirt off. Woo! We <laughs> this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Yeah, this really was the moment we've all been waiting for. And it's still like the scene that they added in Separation Arc when he strips like kind of from the back. Yeah. Was still, I think, the sexier scene. Oh, yeah. I, for sure. Well, there's children present. There's children present. But I, I do like how Tomei was just like, Reagan Sana, why are you stripping? And she's like, oh, okay. I just, like, I just met you. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the first time I talked to you, you yelled at me. So I'm yeah. already getting bad and scared. <laughs> <laughs> they gave him like weird amounts of like definition on his arms. He had little biceps. He has those biceps from holding the gay community. His like pecs were kind of uncomfortably outlined. You're staring at that screenshot a little bit more than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to. I, I like. I'm already talking about it, but I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit yeah, more about it. Yeah, I feel it. like his head didn't look like it belonged in his body at that point. Like, there was just some There's weird, something like, about the shading. The shading didn't I think they up. might have animated the body in a separate rig <laughs> than the head. And then oh. just pasted the head on it. But I could yeah. be wrong. It did kind of look like that. How it was, yeah, it just was a little bit, a little bit odd. But the movements were definitely, like, yeah. good, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And it's just a funny part how he's like, what can I give him? I My slept-in pajama shirt, I guess. <laughs> what ugly face. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I love it. And then he started a new alien fashion trend. Yeah, I love what the aliens are wearing. It. Like, yeah. That's so cute. They like, produced more of the shirt. They're, like, yeah, they were like, that those. looks great. Make more. I want one in five colors, which it's also is hot too. trend. It is a hot trend. I'm surprised. Have they made that shirt? Like, an actual merch? Oh, it's merch? Yeah. They should. I oh, my God. I would buy that. I think that. I said that in season two. That would be amazing merch. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, the question that we raised last time was, how are they going to handle Inakawa's abduction here? Yeah. And I was very surprised to just to see how much time it got. Yeah. And how much attention it got. And yeah. And they like really put a lot into flushing out this this alien world. I and know. All the little creatures. Yeah. And, I yeah. kind of loved it. It was pretty cute. Yeah, no. And I, I thought... I thought that was kind of a nice, like, animation flex just to get weird with yes. the backgrounds and everything. And that little creature, like... Oh, yeah, the little creature and predator and I, thing. And I like how his hair got longer. Yeah! And, yeah, it was it was kind of interesting, because, like, the timeline is that on Earth, I guess, he'd been gone for ten days is, like, the canon timeline. They didn't exactly say it in the, in the anime, but yeah. in the manga, it was, like, ten days on Earth, which... Could have been longer, I guess, on yeah. whatever planet he was. And uh, yeah, then like the anime, I think, makes it clear that it was a longer period of time. Yeah. Just from the way his uh, hair grows out, it was pretty, pretty funny. He's just like so, so world weary by the end of it. I like um, <laughs> when he um, is in the ship and he like towards the end and he's coming back to Earth and he opens like the door and how his eyes are like their eyes. Yeah. And I think that's it's great. Cute. Yeah, that's yeah. cute. Also, uh, not to get too, look too meta into it, but like they let him go home and he was like something like, if you need to tell someone something, just look them in the eyes and tell them it's okay or something like that. I'm like, wow, just like chapter just like 100. Chapter 100. We won't be able to say that too much longer. <laughs> just soon we'll be like in chapter 100. We can't go just like chapter 100. Yeah. Yeah. So in the, true. I was like, whoa, just like the next yeah, arc. So but I was true. like, did they do that on purpose or if I just like I don't know. insane? Is, yeah, it is a cute kind of like <laughs> little moral cap on like the telepathy arc is that you know, you can communicate things from people just by looking them in the eye and, yeah. you know, opening your heart or whatever. That's Open how he's able to communicate. Open your heart. It's a song. Yeah. song. <laughs> Perfect. 
Thank you. So yeah, Inukawa. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was. Uh, it was kind of funny how I brought up that Omake last time, where he yeah um, gets. Uh... Oh, we're talking about this. <laughs> I can always cut it if I decide that I don't want to put true. this to my voice, but I also don't really care. So yeah, it was. <laughs> it was kind of funny how. When I was reading it, I was like, oh, yeah, the, he had some kind of weird experience yeah. with those aliens. And they put that omake in the anime, which was sort of an insane choice. That but, was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was kind of funny how he was just like, oh, my head. Yeah. What happened last night? <laughs> I did. I did. It did come off more to me as like a waking up in Vegas the next day kind yeah. of thing, which is still like a weird joke to make, I guess, but... I guess. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he was ab- abducted by aliens. That's not the worst thing that could happen to him. <laughs> Have you guys seen South Park? <laughs> oh, God. The aliens can do what? <laughs> they can do worse to you. Just be glad you're not in that fictional universe, kid. Fuck <laughs> <Back> up. <laughs> he was fine. His, like, queen, his girlfriend was, like, the queen of the aliens. <laughs> It was, honestly, I was more uncomfortable with, like, the little shot later when that thing, like, yeah. came and called That was actually a little, That was more uncomfortable that was weirder to, me. to me. I was like, that whoa! Was weirder, that like, was weirder to okay, me. Is, are you, like, is that your wife? Yeah, like, <laughs> whoa! Um, maybe, you know, maybe he'd been living for years. Maybe he's over age in the universe now. Yeah, it's so funny you say that because that maybe was... he's 18 now. That's discourse in another series where a character who was younger in canon got sent to space and he's technically he like 30. Yeah, yeah, he's 30, but he has the body of like a 14-year-old or something Oh now. my god. And he is like yeah. the main love interest of the fellow 13-year-old girl. And so that's a huge oh, discourse thing. So it's very funny that you said that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a show. I, I love seeing discourse of a show I've never watched in my life. <laughs> Honestly, it's really fun. It is you don't funny. have to care at all. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, I don't really care about the Inakawa discourse either. Yeah. Uh, it was fine. The yeah. aliens are, are kids themselves. They they do. They're, they're fairly kid-coded, yeah. yeah. Like I said, have you seen South Park? It yeah, worse. we said we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, anyway, um, yeah, we talked a lot last time um, about our predictions for the last few episodes, so we don't have too much to add here. It does seem like next week will be all chapter 99, however, just yeah. from that preview. Mm-hmm. Um, and the title is Mob Moving Away. I, I don't know why it shook me to my core that the name of the, that they're just going to do like Mob as like the final arc name. So I'm assuming that it's going to be listed as like Mob 1, Mob 2, like they did with the Divine Tree arc. And even with this one, Trish, Transmission 1. Well, the first one, one is not called Mob 1. It's just called Mob. Well, no, I the, think no that... the episode is called Mob 1. And then it's Mob 1 moving away. I thought it was just Mob. I swear to God, it's Mob 1. Let's check the receipts on Crunchyroll. Okay, you do that. Thank you. Mob 1. See, oh, told okay. you. Okay, Rissa was right. It is called Mob One. Yeah. So I. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, I don't uh, know why yeah. that hit me. That it's like, yeah, it's gonna be the final arc. It's gonna be Mob One, Mob Two, Mob okay. Three. Okay. Cool. Now, yes. You never listen to me. I listened. You, I just wasn't you sure. You never believe me. You, why sure. can't you just take my word? <laughs> I don't know, cause you're not always right. Name one time. <laughs> We're not, not gonna get into name, that. Name one time. <laughs> I don't keep track of the times that you're not right. You so nothing comes to mind. Maybe the one time I mixed up kidneys and livers when we were talking about Bojack. <laughs> Could be. That was one time. Um, yeah, and they did a little 30-second teaser trailer for the final I'm arc, which um, a lot of that was things we had already seen in the main trailer, but there yeah. were a couple new things. Uh, triple question mark, chucking Teru uh, across the sky. He loves to throw that boy. <laughs> Teru is so he's throwable. He's like, ah, uh, we meet again. <laughs> he's so throwable. He sees Teru. He's like, is anyone going to throw this kid? <laughs> and he doesn't wait for an he answer. Does wait so anyone to go throw chuck this kid? I'm so excited. I love the part when he puts his hand around Teru's throat. Oh, boy. Okay, don't look, <laughs> don't look at me like that. Just because I love it because it's like there's a part of Mob that even though he's so forgiving, still holds that grudge. No, I know. I, I agree. It. Yeah. And he's yeah, like, no, yeah, it, I it still kind of want to beat you up because you 
is you literally choked me to unconscious one unconsciousness one time. And we never and that, talked about and it. That was an insane thing to do, Terror. And then you just <laughs> act like you're my best friend. Like, like Terror Actually, that's kind of weird, Terror. There's, yeah, there's some odd, there's some weird stuff with Terror that's like something's not quite We need to like, talk, we buddy. We need to talk about that. And we never <laughs> did, but we are two repressed teenage boys, so what's gonna what's gonna it. happen? Yeah, so that's no, very I, fun. And then I love how he doesn't hurt Ritsu at all. Oh my god, I know. And after but, just destroying and doesn't <laughs> Ritsu just be like you can or something yeah like, well Ritsu wants his first thought is to get himself hurt thinking that it would wake Mob up yeah and then he and then he realizes that that would just not help yeah oh my god <laughs> oh it's so, gonna be so good yeah, um it's gonna be good stuff and another new shot from the trailer at the very end was um Reagan sort of bracing his hand against mob against triple oh. question mark it's, which the pre like the pre dimple reagan uh reveal yeah that's so like that was crazy. right they, at dimple reagan they put the credits over it so you couldn't get a good look at it but it was like the craziest oh thing oh my the god so yeah it's gonna be really dimple exciting. reagan's gonna be fucking insane it's gonna be fucking insane holy <laughs> shit remember they're, the they're fucking, gonna go so hard the, yes oh my god i just remember the fucking hype of like fucking Dimple, Dimple Mom? Yes! Okay. Just in Mokabi yes. and yes. like or in like and World so Domination. Cool. Still, oh, it was so it's still good. Like one of the best anime moments for this oh show. Oh my god. Is how they did Dimple Mom. Oh my god. Like I could watch Dimple Mob compilation and I do. I watch Dimple Mob compilation <laughs> videos all the time because he's so cool. See, they need to animate the spin-off just so they can do Dimple Tomei. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I wanna see I wanna see Tomei She's doing so those stick backflips. Yes, you'd be so fair. Equality rights. Yeah. I wonder, like, <laughs> Let with that do part, that. it's a little bit different because Reagan is still there and they kind of talk to each other. Whereas with Mob, it's like it's fully like dimple. Mob's gone. It's fully it's fully dimple. Yeah. So I wonder how they'll kind of change his look or his movements. And then obviously, like, there's a short exchange where he's like talking yeah. to himself or like to yeah. you know to Dimple. Speaking of talking to oneself, the little clips of like Mob's mental space mm, were yes. shown a little yes. bit. And it's very similar to the art style of when Mob is talking to Mogami in the white space. Oh, yeah. I noticed the sense. blue light lo- outline the blue outlines, with yeah. Mob, That's but they cool. did not show any of Triple Question Mark in that mental space, I don't think, in the teaser. Yes, they just showed the they just mob, showed mob kind of like peeling. Yeah, yeah but uh, so I'm really excited to see how he's going to look because he has such yes. a cool inverted way. Yeah. to him in the yeah. manga so i'm really excited to see how they're gonna show him and how he's animated so final arc we'll probably just do one video kind of after the last four and whether we release that as one video or two videos we'll just see how much we have to say yeah. and how that works but we'll probably just do one kind of recording sesh after the end so if there's four episodes left how do you think they're gonna split them up oh uh, well we got- I mean, yeah we kind of talked about that a little bit last time but like uh, chapter 99 for episode 9. Then 10 would be the beginning of chapter 100, probably ending with the Teru fight. Episode 11, I'm like a little... Because like the things that are left are like... Ritsu and Sho. Or Sho and... Yeah, Sho and Suzuki. Um, his dad. And then his Ritsu. Dad. Yeah, Ritsu and... Uh, and or, or, or the Body Improvement Club, which is short. Oh, but, shit. I then, forgot about that. And yeah. then Ritsu. And then also there's just Reagan like kind of going through through the city with uh, Serizawa, which we have seen some of in the trailer. Yeah. And that's like not a huge amount, but it does like there's a lot of build up like before he even catches up with Mob. I could see them doing a lot of those clips specifically of Serizawa or not. Yeah, Serizawa and Reagan walking through the cities. I could see them that being a lot in like the credits or the post credit scenes yeah. too. Because then it seems like all of that in 11 and or yeah. maybe it could cut off at some point with the Reagan stuff. You know, that doesn't necessarily have to be like like it could maybe cut off like when Reagan is kind of like going off on his own maybe yeah. I don't know something like that and then episode 12 would have Reagan and Mob you know Dimple Reagan that whole scene the confession scene the end of chapter uh, 100 when Mob goes off to see Subomi comes back 
Gets rejected. Gets rejected. Cries. Spoilers. Um, those, spo- are, spoilers. those are the big spoilers. That's the biggest spoilers that Subomi says. Oh, I've never thought of you that way. Subomi says, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> Subomi's like, I'm gay. And Muff's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Bye. He said, like, that, understandable. Have he, a good day. He's like, whoa, you're transgender? <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> and then, yeah, the last I half to a third of the episode being like the epilogue. And I wonder if they'll have, if they've like hidden like a special secret song from us for the end. They probably have. Because they did that for season two, so maybe yeah. they'll have like a special song for Reagan's birthday and Oh my god. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> Yeah. Reagan's I'm gonna birthday. cry. And we also get to see Reagan crying. Yes. Which is I'm so excited to see him just cry in an embarrassing way. We're gonna like, see Mob snot. crying too. We're gonna see Mob crying a lot. Yeah. yeah. We've we've seen Mob cry. But we've not never... ugly cry. Yeah, like we this. haven't seen him ugly cry, I guess. Yeah. We've never seen Reagan I'm really cry ex- at all. He's gonna st- I want Studio Ghibli yeah. thick ass tears <laughs> running <laughs> down those cheeks. I want sniffling and groveling yes. <laughs> on the screen. On the screen. I wanna see it. I wanna break down <laughs> with Mob. I am kinda sad that there's and I'm sure it's going to continue. There's been a lot of trend of, like, the theme song getting cut out because of other True, stuff. True, yeah. And it happened. Not using, like, the ED. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of that, which yeah. kind of You've probably only seen the ED, like, three or four times yeah, so far. Yeah, honestly. I'm like, damn. They did all that oil on paint and for, for no, what? what? Oil what? on paint. Oil, paint on glass. Paint on glass. Uh, sand on glass. I mean, for what? Just to see Inukawa get abducted by some fucking aliens? <laughs> what the fuck? No, <laughs> yeah, there wasn't even a song with that either. It was just like... Stupid uh, Inukawa, stupid dialogue. Stupid Inukawa. Worst character. They should have kept him. No, I like, I like <laughs> Inukawa. He's funny. Why? I like when he shook Mob. <laughs> when he took Mob by the shoulders and shook him, it was funny. He needs to get his hands off my boy. <laughs> Inukawa doesn't add anything to the story. He's got he's what he's got. He's got oval eyebrows hater. and middle parted hair. I think he's funny. No, he's, he's awful. Just like a norm, normal kid. Terrible. He's I like hate him. he kind of reminds me of Reagan. <laughs> okay, now I think that's a bit of a but stretch. But he's just like a normie. Are are your feet tired for walking? <laughs> From that stretch. Why do you hate Inukawa? You're just like a kid. I don't know. I just started <laughs> my Inukawa hate like like literally this second and now I'm doubling down on it. Comment, like, and subscribe if you hate Inukawa. <laughs> Comment, like, okay. and subscribe if you like Inukawa. Either way. <laughs> if you are indifferent. If you are indifferent. Smash that like button if Inukawa boils your blood. <laughs> and you want the him alien dead. Have killed him. <laughs> They should have experimented on him horrifically. <laughs> they, sh- <laughs> they should have put a bob in him and Probed sent him, him all back. Over the place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think we're done. I think that's it. Well, uh, oh my God, the last last four. It's crazy. Uh, this but yeah, is coming when, to an when end. we next see you, it's going to be over. It's going to be over. That's so sad. All right. See you then. Bye. <laughs>